Hi there. So today I am out here and I'm just gonna give you a little tour of my front landscape bed here. I had some people asking if I could take you around my house and show you what I planted, talk about why I picked it, why I planted it, and why I planted it where I planted it. So that's what we're gonna do today and we're just gonna start right here on my little walkway and basically just a quick synopsis of this area i might still have a picture but i drew up a picture as we were we were building our house and uh, we designed our house and everything the outside the inside and then i really wanted to do all my own landscaping for one reason because i could do it cheaper myself than hiring somebody to do it uh, so it took uh, a while to get it all in because i like to wait for clearance plans and I know some of the plant vendors, so I got some good deals on some certain things, but I kind of had a vision in my head from a picture that I found on the internet, and uh, I will, if, I'll try to find that picture. I might still have it somewhere, but basically it was just boxwoods lining a walkway path up to a front door, and that picture just gave me kind of the vision, and I built off that picture. So I drew something up, and I wasn't really sure how it was gonna turn out. I didn't really know what plants I was gonna put in here other than boxwoods. I knew that for sure. And then the rest just kinda of happened. So, all right, let's walk around here and I will show you what we have and I'll kinda of talk about it and let you know why I plopped it in my landscape. I feel like in order to start out on this bed, we have to start from this side because this is the first thing that we put in, this retaining wall. And after we built our house, this was all just dirt and the day that the guys came in here to grade out our lawn i came in here and i just drew landscape lines with some uh orange landscape paint and i went around and actually i started down there but i went around with my landscape paint and i just went like that and then i drew a line where i wanted a retaining wall we went up here and then as it went around, I wanted it to kind of naturally curve in a little bit and then go around my sidewalk. And so that's kind of how it started. We got the retaining wall put in. And then from there, I knew I wanted a tree to be like the focal point. At the time, everyone was kind of, do you guys hear that chipmunk? I can see him, he's, he's sitting right there chirping at me like a crazy person okay so I uh at the time everybody was putting in the weeping cherry trees and I have one over there but I didn't really want a weeping cherry tree because that's like what everybody was doing <laughs> and I try to just think outside the box sometimes and so I picked this dappled willow and I love it it has been on a struggle ever since we planted it. I got it for 40% off at a greenhouse down the street. And um, it was beautiful. It wasn't a, you know, a clearance plant or anything. It was just the end of the season. And so they were running a sale on all the plants. It has been on a struggle though since I planted it because the chipmunks, <laughs> as you can hear, love to dig holes tunnels they they've dug tunnels all in through there and so they've exposed the roots on this plant and for the last six years I have been like nursing it back to health and it is doing okay not last year but the year before here I'll show you I thought I was gonna have to pull it out I thought it was completely dead uh basically ooh, oh gosh I just stepped on a spider web <laughs> Um, basically this whole side of the tree was dead and I uh, let's see if you can yeah so that right there I had to chop that off this whole side of the tree was completely dead and I it, it just died it succumbed to the chipmunk holes <laughs> beneath the soil around the roots and it was just like I'm dying I can't I can't live anymore so I cut it off I said I'm gonna give you through the next season and it did okay. It it uh, it came back, and it actually this year it looks really really good. It does need to be staked up again. I've staked it so many different times, and then it just keeps 
leaning that way but honestly it kind of gives it a little character i kind of don't mind the lean i think it's cute now the reason i picked this tree in particular is i live in michigan <laughs> we have a very short growing season and so my whole kind of method to my garden is if i'm going to plant something especially if it's a perennial i don't want to be having it bloom for you know three weeks out of the year and then it looks like trash the rest of the year that's just my opinion as i i don't have time for that in my garden so i want to pick something that is going to give me some sort of color even even if it's not a flower um, i want the leaf to give me some sort of color all year round i would rather forfeit that beautiful bloom for three weeks like for instance, like a salvia. Um, I think salvia is beautiful when it's blooming. When it's not blooming, it's not my favorite. I, I'm just like, that's taking up room for four months out of the year that I could have something that's just a leaf give me tons of color. And so that's kind of like my whole motto in my entire garden. So that's what happened when I picked out this tree. This tree looks like this all season long. It doesn't flower, but it has these beautiful variegated leaves on it and they are just breathtaking i love them so much now don't get me wrong i do have a weeping cherry tree over there that blooms for a few weeks out of the spring and then it stops blooming and i i still have one of those i picked that because of its texture i love that it is just like weeping and it has this beautiful flowing texture as it's just like dangling there over top of my plants that i have underneath it so that i picked for a different reason i didn't necessarily pick it for the flowering reason because that's short-lived but anyway that's just i mean i'll just tell you that right off the bat because that's kind of how i pick everything especially in my front landscape um, all right, so let's keep moving. So another rule that I have, especially up by my house, is I don't really like my plants to touch each other too much if I can help it because of snakes. <laughs> there are more places snakes can hide if your plants are touching each other. So I started out, these are just three hydrangeas right here, and they are getting a little bit big for me. I, I don't mind because they're not touching my house. I tried to plant them you know, far enough away from my house that it's not, you, can, you can't really tell, but there's space in there. So I like to give my plants a lot of space. I didn't want to put too much stuff underneath here because I just wanted this tree to stand out and I wanted your eye to kind of take you back to the hydrangeas. So what I did was I tried to think of color, pattern, texture, and shine so I've got some pattern going on with you know I got multiple of, of the same plant going on in like a row and I have diff tons of different colors going on in this bed so there's yellows there's whites there's greens there are reds and oranges and purples and blues and none of these plants are annuals okay so it's not annual color and none of these plants flower significantly uh, it's just all leafy color and I don't have to mess with this all season long it looks this beautiful and colorful all season long and that's kind of my motto so these heucarella here they do flower you can see that one has spent blooms on it that I gotta cut off the hasta do flower you know but I'm I know you guys have seen a hasta bloom before i love them i think they're beautiful same thing with heucara i love the heucara blooms but when it's not blooming like i said it gives me beautiful color i've got some so this one right here is called catching fire so that provides just like the pop of shine and lemony lime color then these ones over here i've had in for probably about six years they're getting huge that's my hand next to it. I could split this one. Uh, these are called pumpkin spice, hikarella. And then these ones back here are called plum pudding. And they're so pretty. I just put these catching fire in last fall, I believe. And they were $3 a piece. I was just testing them out. They said they took parts on, but I took a chance and I put them out here. This is pretty much full sun out here. These ones over here get more full sun and you can see they are struggling a bit, but it took them a while to bounce back from 
our underground sprinkling went out this year and there was about three weeks of a drought <laughs> and it took them a long time to bounce back from that so anyway Over here i wanted some blue color in here so these are all halcyon hasta and i literally just dug all these up and split them from other hasta in my gully garden down there so those are free and then like i said these annabelle hydrangeas they kind of just create that backdrop for this area now this year i got a little bit discouraged because we got two huge rainstorms in a row and my annabelles fell over and they didn't pop back up usually they pop back up but they didn't this year and i thought okay we're just gonna deal with it and then they did this and they started drooping over my retaining wall and i thought that is gorgeous i love that so anyway we'll let them do their thing for now Getting back up here you can see my retaining wall just kind of comes flush with the ground that's what i wanted i came in here with a lot of you ask what my edging is and we just bought this edging from home depot and it is i don't know i bought it for like eight or nine bucks a strip and i think it's like nine feet long uh, but that was like six years ago so it is much more expensive now but i absolutely love this edging it is amazing you literally piece it together uh right here and you put the stakes in super easy to use and uh yeah i'm so glad that we did it because it just really keeps that nice clean edge now i only have edging around my house and then around my island bed and my tree because those are the areas i want to keep formal looking down in my gully garden all along here and along the back of my woods and all the other places i do not have this edging i just like it to be free form so then we will come up here and i kind of took that the color in the pattern of that catching fire hucarella and uh we come into a remember me hasta so you can see it kind of keeps that same color going but it, the texture change changes a little bit now last summer i think i don't remember when it was i had i had hydrangeas in here i had endless summer hydrangeas in here maybe two summers ago and they just never did okay. I transplanted them to a different section of my garden. I can show you those sometime. And they actually are doing a lot better where I put them. But I came in here with these piglet fountain grasses. And I think they're so pretty. <laughs> they're a little bit bigger than what I thought they were going to get. But um, only because I feel like they're, you know, kind of hiding these remember me hasta. But that's okay because these remember me hasta are not doing the greatest in the sun they are holding their own but you can see that they do have some brown spots on them um i'm not sure though if this is because of the underground sprinkling going out in the summer a lot of these plants just had a really rough time bouncing back from that because i didn't have time to come out here and water everything uh the same thing with that plant so that piglet fountain grass as you can see is a lot smaller than the other two the springtime it popped up and it had complete baldness in the middle it was actually kind of funny it was completely bald in the middle and then everything around it was gorgeous so what i did was i came in i dug it up i cut out the center with my hori hori knife and then i planted all the outside bits in one clump and it is doing great it was on a struggle just like you know my hasta and my catching fire have been but it is finally starting to bounce back and it looks amazing i'm so proud of this plant and i think it's gonna look really really pretty next spring and be just as big as my other piglets now in the back you can see the pretty roses popping through so when we built our house we designed like this I don't know what you call it, like slate or rock or whatever. We wanted that rock on there and I thought, you know, it's such a pretty rock and we had to pay a little bit of extra money for it. It's not just regular siding. And so I said, you know, I don't want to plant a plant in there that's going to cover that up. I, I think it's beautiful and I would rather plant something that can kind of emphasize the rock instead of, you know, the hydrangeas. 
if I planted those in there, you wouldn't even see any of that beautiful rock. So I ended up putting these really pretty Easy Elegance roses. I got them for 50% off at Lowe's at the end of the season one year. And I just think that they allow this rock on the side of my house to just shine and do its thing without overshadowing it. And they bloom all season long. They are amazing. I cannot say enough about these Easy Elegance roses. I I absolutely love these. They were on a struggle. I came in here in the spring or at the end of the spring and I sprayed them all with some soap and water and uh, they are bouncing back. They had gotten attacked by the Japanese beetles, but they are just doing great. And you can see I like to mix different hardscapes. So I love to do different colors and textures even in my like mulch and rocks. Around my house, I really wanted just like a super clean look. So I wanted rock up against the house and I tried to kind of, if the hydrangeas were in here, you'd see that it kind of goes all the way around. But I wanted rock up around the house just for a super clean look and then mulch in the rest. So that's why that is like that. Uh, let's see. So over here, this little section, these are big begonias. I plant these in here every year. I used to plant just regular begonias and then I did an experiment one year with these big ones and I thought, oh my gosh, I love these big begonias. They're amazing. They're literally giant. Like that is, uh, here, let me show you. I'm gonna go stand by them. I'm 5'3 and so I'm, I guess, I guess this isn't, isn't a good example because I'm so short, but I mean, that's like up to the top of my kneecap. That's really pretty. You know, regular wax begonias, they only come up to like right here. So I just, I love these begonias. They are amazing. And not only do they flower like this all season long, <laughs> which is like my motto, um, the leaves like turn this beautiful bronzy, almost red color and I just adore them so much. These are just one of my favorite, one of my favorite annuals. And I know it's an older plant. I know that it's been around for years and years and like, but you know what, like my mom used to plant them, not the big ones, she used to plant the wax begonias, but my mom used to plant them, my granny used to plant them, my great granny used to plant them. Like, I don't know, there's just some nostalgia to them and they're gorgeous. So uh, another thing we have right here, this is a globe blue spruce. I put this in, I don't know, a couple years after I put the rest of the landscape in. I knew I wanted something here, but first of all, I didn't want to pay full price for anything, so I was waiting for something to go on sale. And then second of all, I just didn't know what I wanted. I wanted to get the most perfect specimen, and I thought, you know what, this area needs um, color. It needs a different color, and it needed blue. I had the green with the boxwoods, I've got the black with the mulch, the white with the rock, I've got Red. I said it just we didn't we need some blue in here so I found this blue spruce and it was at Horrocks which is a really really cool garden center uh, in my town and I love Horrocks it was 50% off <laughs> and I was like I'll take it it was so tiny I'll show you a picture but anyway so that is my beautiful little globe blue spruce I had a bird actually a dove make his nest in here this year. And I don't think they ever hatched, you guys. I just, I, I feel bad, but he built his nest right by the walkway. I mean, we've got people walking up here all the time, Amazon, FedEx, UPS, I mean, anyway. All right, so then in here, I always, I do this every year too, underneath this blue spruce, I put my red begonias and white euphorbia. So this is diamond snow euphorbia and I've tried diamond frost, snow, mountain, and I love the snow the best because it's like super dense white flowers. The diamond frost is really pretty too. It gets a lot bigger, but it doesn't have as dense white color. So this is kind of my little red, white, and blue section. I love this section and so I love to place rocks just randomly throughout these two rocks in here I got just from our yard when they built our house I collected all the rocks 
I went around, I collected all the rocks and I put them in a giant pile and then I just use them in my landscape. So you can see I've got the big begonias kind of throughout and it just provides so much color. I love it so much. So let's back up and we will go look from this way. So when I started, I wanted to tell you about our retaining wall and just kind of the line I made. You can see these two little plastic round things here. That is our septic tank. And these are like the entry points if they ever need to pump it or get in there or whatever. Uh, so I kind of toyed with the idea of making a bed that went like around this, but it just didn't make sense. I couldn't picture it. I was like, I could, you know, take this and go all the way around here and then dip in and I, I don't know any way I drew it out it just didn't work and I thought you know what whatever we'll just I'll get used to them and honestly I don't even really notice that they're there anymore <laughs> you guys probably see them all the time but I kind of just got used to it so yeah so then the the line it kind of goes around here it dips down and then it comes around like that so that brings us back to the beginning <laughs> where I also have big begonias that big rock right there I dug that out of the gully garden hill so there that rock was like just a little point of that rock right there it was sticking out of the hill down there with like trees and shrubs and just weeds all around it and I thought oh that's cool so I started digging and kept digging and digging and digging and I had to dig for so long you can't even really tell how big it is next to it it's pretty big but it's not really doing it justice so <laughs> anyway I dug that out of the hill and plopped it right there I dug that from my brother's hill the other day I got that rock from my brother's hill and I put it there and I got that rock from my brother's hill and I put it right there uh, let's see this rock while we're talking about rocks I went and led worship at a youth week for summer camp and we went hiking it was in New York New York State and we went hiking in the woods and I found this rock so I brought that home these are green velvet boxwoods and I think I have 14 of them so they line the walkway on both sides and I love them I tried to keep them trimmed into a nice tidy ball and there are so many different varieties of boxwoods out there and so it was really hard to pick what I wanted. The, the main one I went with was the one that was going to stay green and not brown up in the wintertime. So these are green velvet. They do not brown up in the wintertime. They look literally this gorgeous in the winter. This is the most high traffic area really of our yard and landscape and house. And so I just really wanted something that was going to stay green and gorgeous all year round. And so that's why I picked the uh, green velvet. Now this little tree right here, I actually put this in not last summer, but the summer before I think. This is a white shag pine. I also got this at Horrocks for 50% off, like I said, I think two summers ago maybe. And it is doing great in here. I wanted something that was going to kind of mirror the round clumpy boxwoods and also mirror my blue little blue spruce over there but I wanted it to be different and so it has a little bit different texture uh, with these kind of white pine needles here and then it is just a different color as well and also a different height so it's a little bit shorter than the one up there so then we kind of walk through here and then throughout I just have pops of the big begonia this is actually a silver falls dichondra that just like showed up the other day and I left left it. <laughs> it's so pretty I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. So in here I didn't start out with these blue rocks. These are the Mexican beach pebbles I think. You can get them in a bag at Home Depot. I did not start out with these in here. This is our downspout and every time we get a rain, any type of rain, even if it wasn't like a giant rain, all my mulch would wash out onto the sidewalk and it was just a mess. Little side story, I used to work at the company that sold plants at Home Depot stores. So I I was there for, gosh, I don't know, years. And so I was in the Home Depot stores all the time. And one cool thing about Home Depot stores is they have like a little 
flatbed cart of opened bags of mulch and rock and soil and all that stuff and it's usually like 25 cents or something crazy and so every day when I'd go in I would check that cart and I would see if they had any Mexican beach bubbles on it <laughs> and I would buy them I don't care if it was like you know 50% of the bag was missing if it's 25 cents it's coming home with me so I gradually collected enough beach pebbles to like fill this area and I think it's so pretty um, and then a couple years back when was that like two years ago I think was it 2020 no it was 2019 it was the year before corona um, it was Halloween and I decorated my gully garden with just like I made ghosts and I made them out of uh, frost cloth and like a boat and pots and stuff like that I hung them from the trees and I had like a giant spider web in there and I made a giant spider and I like decked out my gully garden like Halloween style and so the kids I had them you know lock off this little sidewalk and then I was like okay go down in my gully garden and I had candy down there they'd have to go like find it and there was nowhere for them to walk in between here so that's when I like added this little path I just I took took some stones from this side and I just made a little path on that side and I don't know and it just stayed and it kind of stuck <laughs> yeah so that is why that path is there and I love it because I walk through there all the time and it adds a little bit more texture and color and just something interesting in there so then over on this side I've got my little lime hydrangeas and I really wanted to take a second and talk to you about these little limes because you see all of the blooms on these these get so many blooms and I am obsessed with little lime hydrangeas and I wanted to show you how I prune them so that they give you this effect. I have done it a few different ways over the years and just tested it and I figured out the way I like to do it so that I get more small blooms and then less big blooms if that makes sense. Um, when I first planted these I was on Google and YouTube and I was looking up all these different things and everybody was saying like oh you gotta you gotta prune them back so that you know there's only certain stalks and they're gonna be super sturdy and that way it will hold up the big blooms because you know these things can get a giant bloom on them and then if a rainstorm comes you know all that extra moisture and, and uh, rain is like sitting on the blooms and it weighs them down and it's hard for them to pop back up. All the videos I was watching they were telling me to you know cut them back really harsh and make sure you only keep certain sturdy stems so there's a better chance of it not flapping. So I did that for the first few years and my stems that I kept when I was pruning they were very sturdy they were amazing but my blooms were still so big that anytime a rainstorm came, it would still weigh them down and I, I hated it. I hated the way it looked. I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna figure out my own way to do this. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm gonna do the opposite of that. And uh, I love it. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe people think I'm nuts. Maybe I'm telling you the wrong thing, but this is just what I do. And so I go in here and I actually made a, a movie of it this spring it was it's very hard to explain so I don't think my movie was that informative and good but um, if you want to go back and try to watch it you can but what I do is there's tons of different stems in here and I go in and I cut back every single one of them so let's say you've got like let's say this is your your sturdy stem and you've got like all these branches coming off of it like my fingers are all the branches coming off of it a lot of people were telling me to you know, prune all these other branches off of it so that the, just this one sturdy stem can stay and then it will create this big gorgeous bloom. That's amazing, but it still fell down in the rain. So what I did is I went in, I kept the sturdy stems, and instead of trimming all those little stems off, I trimmed all the little stems, but I didn't trim them off. So I will get any close because I'm probably confusing the heck out of you and I will show you what I did. So I'm gonna pull this hydrangea back and I hope that you can see in here. But if you can see in here, there's tons of different branches. So a lot of people, when I would Google, they were telling me 
to, you know, only keep a few sturdy branches and then trim all the rest off. Like I said, <laughs> that was great, but I just didn't like how it, it was making my hydrangeas flap. So for instance, this, this hydrangea right here, I went in and I trimmed back. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna have to get closer. So let's take this branch right here. Get all these dead ones off first so you can see better. But you can see that years ago, I trimmed it back right here. Then it grew these, that one, that one, and this one. In previous years, I would have come and cut all of these off right here, okay? And I probably actually would have cut it down here, all right? Because that would put more energy into this stock right here, and then it would in turn, theoretically, create a stronger stock that would hold up a bigger bloom better. Well, it wasn't working for me. So instead of chopping it off right here, which would also, you know, take all these branches off, last year, well, the, the past couple years, I've been cutting them off right here. So I would come and chop this branch off, this branch off, and you see this over here, that branch right there. And then it left me with all these small flowers. And I'm gonna back up so you can see. So instead of one giant bloom that my stock could not physically hold up in a rainstorm, it gave me um, all of these little ones right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then all these cute little white ones. Okay, <laughs> it's gorgeous. And that is the case on this little hedge of hydrangeas. Boy, oh boy, that was a little intense. And I, you're, you guys are probably just like, ah, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> She's going nuts. Um, but I hope that makes sense. Maybe I'll try to do a better pruning video next spring and show you what I mean. But Insert the disclaimer, this is just what I like to do. This is what I have found to be desirable for my landscape and my hydrangeas. And I also wanted to show you over here, I think I, by the time I got around to this last hydrangea when I was pruning it, I got a little lazy and I didn't prune it that way. And I'm gonna show you what happened. The other day I saw two snakes down here, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going down in there. <laughs> but you can see, uh, these blooms right here are a little bit bigger. By the time I had gotten to this hydrangea, I just, I don't know, I got lazy or something and I didn't prune it properly. And so you can see there's like a big hole right there because these hydrangeas never popped back from those two rainstorms. They're drooping down. And so that is, I don't even know if you can, if you can tell that, but that is the reason that it's happening, so. Anyway, I did just want to give you that information on little lime hydrangeas. That is just what I have found to be true with them over my testing out the pruning over the years. Down here, we've got two Hamelin fountain grasses, and they kind of just like anchor either side of my walkway here. And this is just kind of like a big brother to the piglet fountain grass over there. So I love those in there. They're so pretty. And then... The chipmunk got into my pots. This is what they do. They they start, this is why I lost some roses last year is because they start hiding their nuts in my potted plants. Um, but anyway, my tradescanches are doing really great. I planted these the other day from my sister and that pot looks really good too. Oh, I want to talk to you guys about mangave sometime too. I love mangave. Anyway, let's finish up this front landscape. And I wanted to insert a picture of when this first started, when I first planted my boxwoods. And I wanted to show you guys how small they were when I first planted them. I thought it would give you a little bit of encouragement. So thank you guys so much for watching this probably long-winded, too much information video of my uh, front landscape here, but I hope you kind of like see my vision and why I do what I do 
There are a lot of plants that I steer clear of. It doesn't necessarily mean that I don't like them. I may love that plant, but is it gonna work in my garden? Probably not. Just because I live in Michigan, I have a really short growing season and I like to make the best of my growing season. And so that's why I only pick certain plants. But anyway, I just hope that you guys maybe learned something. Uh, I, I know I learn a lot from you guys, so I wanted to thank you for that. You guys are always giving me suggestions and being like, hey, maybe you should do this with those Japanese beetles. <laughs> maybe you should bring a broom with you when you see a snake. <laughs> goodness um I'm kind of stalling because I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to sh show you uh and I did just want to encourage you guys too to uh try to remember to take pictures of your landscape especially when you first put it in I am so glad that I have pictures of some of my areas I wish I would have had more pictures of my gully garden I kind of have it like in the distance a little bit and, um when I'm took pictures of like the side of my house landscape and uh, I, I'm like oh, look you can see part of my gully garden what it used to look like and so I, I after that I started taking more pictures and um, I get so encouraged by looking back through my pictures and because sometimes you're like oh man this tree isn't growing or this shrub just looks so small like when is it gonna put on size then you go back and look at your picture from like three four five six years ago and you're like oh that was actually tiny when I planted it and it actually put on quite a bit of growth. So it can be really encouraging to go back and look at your pictures and remind yourself of uh, where you've come and where you are now. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you guys again for watching and I hope that you just have a really amazing day. Bye.